Hello. Yes. Good afternoon, George. Hi, Anu. And the entire panel. <laughs> Michael, Kim, Atul. Good afternoon. Just, yeah, we're just checking that you hear us well because there were some audio and, issues. And, oh, good. <laughs> yeah. 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 We could not, but now, yes. Excellent. Good. Can you see the case number seven by the side? Case number seven on the slide, please. Yes, we can. 74 year old male. Go ahead. Yes, 74-year-old male who initially presented with the uh, angina class 3. Risk factor wise, he has hypertension, hyperlipidemia, diabetes, uh, good medical therapy. Kath had shown that he had two vessel disease, had distal RCA lesion as well as a very complex uh, LAD diagonal bifurcation uh, with a totally occluded distal LAD. Diabetes and uh, we have since it was mid LAD lesion, he did uh, have a heart team discussion, but he did not want uh, uh, to have any surgery. So the RCA PCI was done and now he's uh, here for uh, distal LAD total occlusion CTO. So this is where his uh, LV function, which is normal, right coronary artery, large vessel, Stent was done, and you start seeing the distal LED filling. This is, uh, I, uh, we have the picture. Actually, you know what? Let me go to the area. Yeah. Just play. Just give us some time to review the loops as it happened. Have the mics up, please. Keep the mics up all the time. Thank you. Yeah, good. And this is where you see the bifurcation of the proc beta LED. Hmm. Totally wow. occluded distal. And let me do yeah. one more picture. I mean, clearly, this is a very good case for uh, John, uh, Dr. Puskas. But clearly, this patient actually I took care about uh, four years ago. Uh, at that time, LED was total. Uh, bifurcation lesion of the LED diagonal was there, but uh, like 70% and RCA. So that time, uh, we, there was a discrete lesion in the RCA and we put one stent about four years ago after the discussion that patient definitely did not want to go for surgery. He did go to actually for the left system unchanged. He came back a few weeks ago uh, with the RCA new lesion. The stent was good, distal lesion, so we put one stent. Uh, and then now we brought back for this bifurcation complex, the so LED diagonal first, and then there is a CTO. So we felt this is a great case for a no. Uh, to go get to the complexity. But these are all cases, just want to say, the case which we are presenting, which my guidelines need surgical consultation, all have been. So we, our goal always is that once we see that case with a multi-vessel disease, diabetic or high syntax score, from our point of view, that patient belongs to surgery. It comes back and we follow those cases, half of them, they come back after the discussion, but that's okay. That is what the uh, heart team and the ultimately is the patient's preference, what they want to do. And uh, this is where this patient was. We didn't ask any consultation this time, but uh, four years ago, we had this consultation with this patient. Now, George, you can carry on while uh, we are applying. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. This is, first and of all, this is a double case. It's a CTO as well as it's a bifurcation. Proximal to the CTO. We get in the CTO, label it as a CTO, we get the bifurcation as a bonus. And uh, Dr. Puskas is going to talk to us a little bit, he's joining us right now, uh, uh, about the possibility of a robotic closed chest revascularization of this LAD and diagonal. Would that be an option, uh, uh, John, uh, based on your experience in this case, uh, um, for this patient? The robotic approach gives us a view uh, through a very limited mini thoracotomy. So we don't wow. see uh, the entire LED. We are able to bypass a diagonal and LED when they are in close proximity to each other, typically relatively parallel to each other. Mm -hmm. I assume that the diagonal you're referring to is the first one there, which is pretty Next. high. Yep. Next. And the target on the LED is in the mid to distal LED. Those are gonna be pretty far apart. Remember, we're looking at a four centimeter keyhole incision. So quite honestly, you'd either have to make a bigger than usual mini thoracotomy to graft these two, 
or treat this as a hybrid approach, graft the distal LED with the IMA, and then stent the proximal LED into that circ, excuse me, into that diagonal. So I'm very impressed by the okay. collaterals from the right to the distal LED. The distal LED is not that big. This is a very dominant right that goes all the way to the apex and then also collateralize the LED. So I'm sure that Dr. Kinney will open the CTO, but should someone not going to be able to open the CTO, wouldn't that be enough to focus on the proximal bifurcation? Because that's a big territory for diagonals, two diagonals, mm -hmm. and just to, come, to settle on the mid LED from the prox and then accepting the collaterals from the right. Okay, very good point, very good point. And particularly progression has been in the mid LED. The, it's a distal LED or mid to distal LED total has been there over four, four, and four plus years. Or how long before, we don't know. So that was the first angiogram. So LED mid, the, this total occlusion is chronic. Progression was in the proximal to mid LED, that bifurcation. So now going back to how we're going to get our uh, equipment ready for this uh, CTO. Well, we, we have a fine cross here, but anybody want to use a Corsair or a Turnpike, whatever they're comfortable with, anything is okay here. And the first wire, of course, should be a polymer jacketed wire. I like fielder, whether you're going to have fielder XT to see if there's any micro channel, that's okay too. Okay, well, let's see. It's a very challenging case. Let's have to go with the wire first, find the mouth of the occlusion, and then, then try to, um, um, uh, you know, do some uh, escalation. There are many branches uh, up, up top, and then, you know, have to navigate through those, and obviously a microcatheter is a, a fine cross is a must. Uh, is there any specific, uh, from the panel, is there any specific preferences for microcatheter? Yeah. Anybody has like a very strong opinion for one versus another microcatheter? You know, George, we, we actually just stopped using fine crosses. I, yeah, uh, Caravels have taken over in our lab. They're cheaper. And they're, the which ones? The Caravel. Caravel. Mm -hmm. uh, they're cheaper and more deliverable. Uh, you could also, you know, torque it a little. Uh, but for, for CTO, I, you know, I think you like to use a Corsair. You really have, want the possibility of torquing through that CTO. Any other opinion? Nicholson, maybe? Yeah, I think most of the... The dedicated CTO community is either using a turnpike spiral or I'll say a Corsair Pro up front uh, for, for this. And yeah, Caravel is a nice cavity. You just got to be a little careful with it. If you torque it, the tip will break off pretty easily. So I have a question. Why to open the CTO first and not the proximal LED in diagonal? I mean, this is going to be relatively so, easy. The CTO, we don't know how long that's going to take. Open the proximal part first and then deal with the CTO. I think that's that's exactly what I was just going to say. I think I would, you'd have better visualization, no clot formation from cutting off flow and things. So I think that's... Oh, yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a pretty so nice you're sure CTO. Because they can. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, that's what wire is that? You're in rotor? Yeah. Mm, that's fielder. Fielder. A re regular fielder. All right. Like a yes. I, I think the backup here is I have extremely a important. Guy next to us uh, there. I think we do rotor. Yeah. Rotor or orbital? Rotor. So let's see how the macro catheter is going to follow. Uh, it has a little difficulty, but it does follow. It crosses maybe two thirds of it. Let's see if it goes all the way. So is it possible? I mean, that is what everybody's saying that maybe Caravel or Corsair may be a better choice in these kind of cases. But we got so used to uh, Mike, uh, the fine cross that becomes our workhorse uh, this delivery uh, over the wire system. But yes, this is the kind of Caravel. case probably would have been a little less difficult with a Caravel or Corsair. Yeah. You want to see? Yeah, turnpike, teleport. There are several catheters available, and like we mentioned, whatever you are comfortable with. I think a rotavar may go now, right? Yeah, rotavar will go. Yeah. Okay, let's get the rotavar. Yeah. What size burdo? First one is 1.25, approximately 1.75 liter. You don't want to try, Corsair you don't want to try, the, with, you, why don't you try with the Corsair to see if it goes? So since everybody mentioned that the Corsair no, is superior if it goes. You still have to do rota. No. No, I know, but only question is you still have to do rota here anyway. But right? I mean, with this so, so much calcium right? proximally, severe calcium. Yeah. They're saying to cross. No, 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 no
I can tell you, leave this there, take the wire, uh, rotor wire will go in now. Because it has created that channel. Oh. Where's the rotor wire? Floppy, rotor floppy. Yeah. What's, it, what's it in a rather calcium. In, the, in a rather straight yeah. segment here? Calcium. Why? What's your preferences yeah. for rotor floppy versus a regular rotor wire? In this particular case, I, I know mean, in general uh, rotor floppy. Here could be no, both. No, no, no. This definitely <laughs> would be any. Yeah, George. You know, we we've and this we tried this new yeah, rotor yeah. drive wire, and you know, we we found it to be, you know, I, I like it more than the rotor floppy. Uh, it doesn't bend as much. You could actually free wire it uh, a little better than this floppy. So it's I think it's like ten dollars more, unfortunately. So that always, you know, hmm. the, the administrators go nuts over ten dollars. But that's um, it. Here goes our coffee. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. But yeah, rotor. Yeah, no rotor drives a new version of both floppy and extra support. They are more one-to-one -one torque and uh, good. I would say device uh, good uh, wire. Uh, some improvement uh, at the same time only issue remain in the, some tough cases we actually have couple uh, where did not give enough support but i think it's it all happens that how much you have used we have done some cases maybe five ten so so far it is just getting some more experience once you get experience then uh, i'm sure this all will get better but yeah rotor drive is a new addition uh, to their armamentarium uh, particularly that you could do a final uh, advancing and so see that your nose just to teach away, buddy. Once you brought your catheter, nose of the catheter into the lesion, you can leave there, take the wire out, and put your rotor wire will go almost every time. Maybe one in one thousand would not, but otherwise will go in every case. Was Very there, good. Was there any thought of just ballooning them and see what your initial okay. balloon did? I mean, the crossing balloons are so good nowadays. It's not <laughs> usually a heavily calcified area in the LED. No, it is heavily calcified. Look at that. That's why we did the fluoro. Look at the, how heavily calcified it is. Just Go back, show, show them. them. Yeah. See this. Yeah. Tram track. Entire vessel. So, one, yes, I mean, this will be the case. One so five, I would right? say could do okay. One, two, five. But as shown by the rotor regret, about 24% time, you'll be in trouble. That not able to do it, and now you want to do a bailout, which is one approach, but otherwise they just go ahead and uh, hmm. go with that strategy. Yeah. Two five two seven. Yeah. Two five two five twenty. Two five five twenty. Yeah. So we have one point two five. Our principle is very simple. If you could not get your fine cross delivered, uh, or very difficult actually, even if that were very difficult, go to one point two five. We need a one point seven five proximally anyway. Such a calcific vessel, as you see the proximal. So we need a two bar approach. Right? This is the case. Uh, overall, step bar, uh, George, as you know, uh, done in less than 10% of cases. Uh, the cases which come to us, uh, two, three percent of the cases, we use three bars. But this yeah. is the two case bar. Yeah. Right. Now, I mean, uh, very clear because to do for the CTO, you need the small bar to do a good job proximally and the bifurcation that everybody was so interested in and potentially even protect the side branch. You need a little bit of a bigger bar. And we actually have a seven French guide. If need to be, we can use a two or bar proximally. Yeah. So you'll go one, right two, five, one, one, seven, five. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, I would say this, if we are not fun. going to the lesion, I the think we are okay. So to go uh, what we'll do is uh, once we have it, we'll dine up all the way down there. Okay. Good. Just, why not bearing? Yeah. We need to bear anyhow. Yeah. Or start. Okay. You have to pull back the wire a little bit. Yeah, great. Can we, uh, while we see the burr uh, happening, can we talk a little bit about pharmacology during a uh, rotor blade or case such as this one? Well, well, obviously, this patient had a previous PCI, oh, so it's preloaded with uh, yeah, yeah. P2Y12 uh, inhibitor, yeah. Dr. Sharma. Which one you use? Ticagrelor uh, uh, in this case? Yeah. Yeah, so actually what happened is last time he presented three, four weeks ago with acute syndrome. He used to be on uh, clopidogrel. I gave Prasagul last time. He got acute syndrome. So he's on Prasagul and he's on uh, bivalutin. Uh, okay. Yeah, I know a lot of people are worried about using bivalutin in a CTO, but in our lab we routinely use it. Although bivalutin used now in, uh, in our lab is about uh, 60% because most of the radial cases we continue happening. And some cases we do uh, worry about uh, uh, giving the bivalutin, but uh, like this is kind of case where if somebody wants to do it on heparin, nothing wrong in that. But we have seen that wire perforation do very well 
uh, with the bivalent compared to heparin. But yes, uh, CTO area remains uh, questionable. People say, well, it is very expensive. I, can, I know that one point bivalent used to be expensive, then became generic. Uh, the cost became one third, but yeah, it's still definitely a little more expensive than uh, heparin. But most of the time we have seen that it definitely caused less bleeding overall. And that is the reason for us uh, to use bivalent compared to heparin. I know many of the labs in the country or globally have shifted uh, to heparin only. Yeah. Maybe Josh, can, can we go to the, some wire escalation? Well, I know we never had a chance to wire escalate here. We just uh, crossed the uh, CTO. Well, what, I think what should be the wire? If I, you are I going to wire that, escalate, I, I think the difficulty. I mean, the, the the plus and the minus of this case. The plus of this case is that it was rather straight. Once you negotiate all these complex branches up top, finally you get into a funnel but with support from the microcatheter. The wire essentially had to go straight. So that was a plus. Um, and uh, in, a, in many ways, also perhaps uh, more of the calcium was earlier than later. So the, there was a very good, uh, the great choice, and it worked out. If not, you have to go with the uh, another alternative might be to start with a pilot 200 and then escalate to uh, to the Gaia family, etc. For example, um, but let me let me ask something different. I, I see Doctor Doctor Freeman and Doctor Kukar and then Doctor Tamis. Uh, we, I, we're just hearing of standalone cath labs, potentially not in hospital, uh, and uh, performing rotablator cases. Um, very soon coming up, apparently, in some areas of the United States. How would you feel performing a procedure such as this one in a standalone cath lab? Uh, Dr. Kukar first, and then Dr. Freeman, and then uh, Dr. Tamis or anybody else, uh, please. Just very briefly. And we'll let them answer it, then I'll answer the final one on this, in this field. You know, in the state of New York, CTOs in a, in, a, in a lab without surgical backups are not allowed. So if you have a planned CTO, it's not the appropriate thing to do. The bifurcation is a different story. I will let Jason comment on the rota because he does them uh, at his lab and does not have backup. But when we're planning a lab at Mount Sinai, Queens, uh, we will not be planning to do uh, the CTOs there. And for the right reasons, I think, if you have a complication, you don't have the full support, not only of the CT surgery, but the full support of a fellow and multiple attendings there to help you bail you out. Yeah, just to piggyback on that, uh, CTOs. Uh, Let's focus on the rotor blade. Yeah. Forget about the CTO. I think, I think if you're comfortable uh, and you've been an experienced rotor blade or operator, I think uh, you know which cases uh, not to try. Um, you know, without a surgical backup, uh, I think the bifurcation is definitely doable in a non. Surgical on site center. You're done. No, the line. CTO uh, would would definitely preclude you from doing this case, even though it's a short, straight segment, uh, and that's why the wire went across so easily uh, with the fine cross. Uh, but this is this would not okay. be the patient right. that you would do. Okay, off-center. Jackie, no good times. Is it good? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, thanks. <laughs> so I think that a lot of the concerns nowadays with the rotational atherectomy are no longer going to surgery. They're easily fixed with the um, covered stents, et cetera. I think the issue is more logistically, sort of like Ari said, which is really you're, you're at a lab with not, not a, a couple of attendings available to help out. Somebody's putting the impellet in while somebody else is doing the, um, doing the uh, covered stent. So I think it's more a logistical issue um, in terms of having the support you need from mm. the nursing and, a, and a, a, an right. attending standpoint. Just to complicate things better, over here we have a step better approach with a two or better, I think. Um, Dr. Sharma, yes. you have any comments? Is that and, uh, right now? Talk to us about the better choice. Yeah. Yep. Go ahead. Yeah. George, just to finish out with the surgery backup, yeah. uh, we do a lot of roto. We, we had surgery backup. So, question. Yeah. As as so, just to say, so uh, as you see that usually we say don't jump more than 0.5, but goal was 1.25 was for the distal, not for the mid. Mid is a short lesion, so going with a 2 over is reasonable because heavily calcified vessel, and that's what uh, going through the regular process of slow advancement. Yeah. Now we need a little speed up. Go to about 140. Yeah, it's about 130. You need to go to between 140 and 150. Yeah. Good. George, I will say, you know, this new Rota Pro system 
I, I, and this is a good example. I, I see, I sense, or I, you know, I see a lot more D cells in the legacy system. Yeah, you have to go up higher uh, RPMs. You know, we used to go like 140 safely. Now you have to go at least 160 uh, because it decels a lot more for whatever reason. So it decels yeah, just more if you go 140, or does it burn? That doesn't go through, you mean, or it decels at 140 but doesn't decel at 160? I'm not no, sure what. You might decel from 160 to 135, but if you go to 140, you might just stall. Probably. Oh, I, I okay, okay, come, come out. I haven't seen that. Oh, but, yeah, basically, you know, at the point, is, you know, there are two, two reasons. One oh. is the resistance in the current rotor pro system is so low. The deacceleration is much faster, as you mentioned, compared to legacy system. So I have to be careful, and we know that in the beginning, while they were making some changes, we were having a higher rota bar stuck, uh, because there's no resistance, and RPM goes down. Now, coming back to the rota, uh, this goes back to in 2014-2015, I was in the New York State uh, Department of Health Advisory Board. Uh, that time, the request came that can you do rotablation in the stand-alone cat labs? And we voted. And we barely, by one margin, we won that, yes, in an appropriate case, uh, with the no, not have a LV dysfunction and so, the rota can be done in the stand-alone cat lab. And with that note, as you know, at present, uh, we do a stand-alone rotablation at BI, and then we started at uh, South NASA. Now we started with Duvuri Arano online, at Staten Island, I personally have started ROTA at many of these centers with a standalone and have been a good success. Key is, yes, you select your cases. You don't want to have a case with a bad LV, left main bifurcation and so. So standalone at present is allowed in New York State and they leave it to you what you are comfortable with. They don't have any guidelines. People do ask me that what are the guidelines for the state. They say just leave it, but yes, you can do exactly. Only two years ago they changed that you cannot use impella in elective cases. At present, only in cardiogenic shock, in the standalone cath lab. And secondly, you do not, you cannot do a balloon aortic valvuloplasty. Those are the two changes happen. Uh, and uh, Jackie is on the advisory committee now, and she can comment on. I still couldn't understand why they will stop doing the balloon aortic valvuloplasty. If they stop for the standalone cath labs. I know the right-sided ablation that has been a no-no for a long time for the EP point of view. Uh, I mean, le left side ablation. Uh, and uh, so, but the key is still right. uh, the state requirement that you cannot do balloon valvuloplasty. Down. And I stand alone, cat lab is a little um, not uh, clear in my opinion why that rule was changed. Yeah, I, I don't know if I was there for the conversation regarding the balloon valvuloplasty. I don't recall being there, but I think the discussion about the uh, impellus is was that if it was really that uh, high risk of PCI, that it was better done at a uh, center with surgical backup. Yeah. Great. So that, that, that it goes, just to reemphasize what you know, you said, it's really right. LV function that, that really drives this thing when you don't have uh, right. the cath lab. So you don't want to have a very depressed LV function in these cases. I know what kind of balloon yeah. size yeah. and type yeah. you use for this uh, 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 we exercise. We use a 2520 balloon. For the I, distal LED, it was a 2520 balloon. And this is uh, typical in a uh, CTO. Once you balloon it, um, you, you know, there could be little thrombus in that CTO, no matter how uh, old the CTO is. That's why we have some flow abnormality. I think we give some vasodilator. We'll put one stent across. What do you want? 275? 32? Two. Yeah. Oh, what else are we going to do? 32? 38? 275. 32. AK, can you comment on how 32. the stent size? When Sounds like you need a 38. The vessel will be? You want a 38? It's a, you see that the LED's bridge also. Do you want to iris it? Are you able to recognize the bridge in the LED? Well, we have to, but the bridge was at the end of the city area. Okay. I don't think no. there's a way to avoid that. Okay, no, we will, we will. So you want to put us a long one? But well, you have to think about the surgeon. He may need to come and graft it one day. So maybe you don't want to put the stent. Yes, that is, that is why I didn't want to put a long stent. Exactly. Let's go back. Well, although uh, Dr. Puskas can talk to us about stentectomy, if, it, if it's stented, then it needs to be uh, bypassed. Isn't that right, Dr. Puskas? It can be a stentectomy facilitated bypass can be done. It can be done. Uh, and we have done a couple of handfuls. 
Uh, but Very we good. prefer not to. It's a, it's a high stakes and directory. 32, and, uh, right? 32. We develop between the Adventist what was decided here? Science or promise? Sometimes very, very fibrous. Oh, so it's a synergy now? Yeah, it's very so difficult to use some okay, okay. clean to do the stentectomy. No, so that said, it's not always impossible, and we've succeeded a few times, typically in full metal jacket LEDs with relentless angina. Hmm. This this could be a good indication uh, for drug coated balloon. We talked before uh, at lunch with Antonio about so what do you want to prox LED three five. Yeah. This, this could and be a great yeah. three five high pressure. We don't have it approved in three five fifteen. Yeah, good. So let's uh, let's uh, go ahead with the CTO, so we can then talk about how to tackle this zero one one bifurcation, and uh, talk a little bit about the bifurcate ad to help us decide on what next step is going to be. Let's uh, get the panel start thinking about that. One lesion ahead. It's a good point to remove the body wire before you deploy the stent. Don't forget that. You know, George, in terms of the uh, standalone cath lab, I do think that the shock wave is going to have a big role instead of possibly rota in these places. I think, you know, that may be... Uh, yeah, that will be true. Yeah. Up again. Okay, Tom. I think that's a good point. I think one of the things we were fortunate at BI to have is uh, we had surgery and had a trained cath lab. So it's really about your techs and uh, your nursing staff. So anything that is the easiest on the staff and it's prepared. And to dilate the proximal yeah. part of the LED, right? All right. I so think some vasodilator will take care of the distal flow, right? Yeah. So we will uh, now, how do we have, uh, how do you guys want to handle the bifurcation? I'm going to wire the diag. I, why don't you take a 3 balloon, high pressure in the stand, and then uh, predilate this uh, uh, proximal lesion as well? What do you think about that? Uh, Not exciting. Okay, so we have a 3-5, actually. We have a 3-5 for the proximal LED. But don't you want to wire the diagonal? Yeah, we need to. We have, we know. No, yeah. we will wire the diagonal. But uh, you're saying post-dilate the proximal uh, part of this uh, distal stand? Yeah, I think so. I want to make it a little bit bigger, no? Yeah, we need to post dilate that, but we that should be three O. Yeah. I know. I know. Wants to uh, finish the case so fast, but so so realizes we kind of have to do it. Yeah, I would massage the distal segment of the stand. It looks to me like either spasm or pinch there or plaque shift. So gentle, just. Go That's great. The awesome. the Let's pass the wire first into the diagonal in order to be ready for the further action in uh, towards that vessel. Die. And there is a question always that comes okay. up: is there, is there a reason to is there a reason to put a uh, maybe cut the ostium of the diagonal in some ways or pathways, and before the stand yeah. or not? Because it's a tight uh, it a calcific trio. lesion, very osteal Good. there. So, so they want distal massage followed by. I, I so we'll cut the side branch. It, uh, it, it looks like the which one? is a little bit away from the ostium, uh, and just maybe get another angle and just verify that and just try to make this a little bit more simple in the proximal LED. Avoid the diag, you mean? No, it's a conference for complex cases, but. Uh... Yeah, well, you know, it's a complex case. It's not a CTO, it's not a bifurcation, it's both. That's what the complex <laughs> case is. Agreed, agreed. Okay, go here. Four atmosphere. Oh, let's, let's do a little. Uh, Gentle little, massage at the bottom. Be a little careful. Yeah, I think that, let's finish it. Short massage. Yes. Yeah, only two atmosphere. Yes, four yeah, atmosphere. Yeah, out, down. Good, down. We call a little psychotherapy there. <laughs> and then we go high pressure at the proximal edge here. Yeah, that's right. Good. Yeah, 18, 20. Yeah, good. Great. Right. Down. Now, important decision here. Are we going to do two strand strategy or cut and strand across? You can try with the uh, one strand. Uh, but, but I think you'll need to still balloon the ostium of the diagonal. It looks like tight. Yeah. And then make a decision but based whether on you need a provisional or a two strands approach. Based on uh, the criteria and what the app says is that the side branch has significant lesion and the vessel size is uh, close to 2.5, which means we need a dedicated two-stand strategy here. Yeah, it's probably more than 2.5. Let's really ask the panel, what would they do? A two-stand strategy or balloon and strand across? Well, that's real quick. Um, balloon, uh, 
for get the diagonal or treat the diagonal? Jackie. Yeah, I cut the diagonal and then stent across it. Okay, cut and stent across. Michael. I, I, li I like that strategy. Same. Nichols. I dive this and see whether or not it's involving the, di the ostium of the diag. I don't think it is. And then I would just finish these two separate. Thank things. you, William. John. Uh, I would balloon the LAD first, see what happens to the ostium of the diagonal. Again, I don't think it's fully involved, and I would try to avoid mm. it and not touch it at all. Jason? 16, 16 20. Yeah. Atul? I'd cut the diagonal. Stem across. So the majority is we cut the diagonal, um, and the strong minority position that include Dr. Fox and Dr. Keeley, apparently, ballooning the LAD and seeing what happens with the diagonal. So let's see about that. Okay, down. So there is a, you see, is a chunk of calcium on yeah. the lower surface there. Okay, let's see what the da, how the diagonal looks. Definitely it'll look worse. So we will have to do a cutting balloon right now. Yeah, flow is. Yeah. So okay, get us, uh, what's the cutting balloon we have? Two five. Two five two. Yeah, two five, five cutter. The difficulty sometimes when you dilate over the LED is you shift the plaque a little bit. And what's the uh, size we, I mean, LED is equipment extent? into the diagonal, particularly calcific. But let's see about that. Too long, two five no? cutting, two five six cutting balloon. Is there a four cutting balloon, by the 20, way? 24. 24. We keep making them smaller and shorter and shorter. Okay, we don't need more than good. two millimeters here, but. But I think that strategy kind of makes oh, the decision. Oh, this came out. In that sense. Okay. Well, this, this let, is bigger than two five. Let's basically. make this uh, case even more complicated. Recrossing with the wire. <laughs> no. <laughs> as long as you don't do DK cross. Now we are going to the side branch. Uh, we are using a cutting balloon, Wolverine two five to the diagonal. Okay, let's go for it. Let's and go then, for that. Rota in the main vessel, cut in the side branch. Let's see how that goes. Okay, here. Delivery, Go very on. good. Despite the plug shift that I was a little concerned about, no issues. All right, how high want to go with this balloon? 10? Six. 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 Yeah, we went to 14. Down. No, let's go 10 first and we'll see about that. Okay, go up here. Yes. So we are making sure the ostium is cut. Nice. Okay. Down. So this is the moment of truth to see. Ready? Go. There you go. That was an old time classic cutting balloon of the ostium of the diagonal. Dr. Colombo, who have a guest star comment. You come up here with me. Come next to me. Oh, the, yeah. Come next to me, Dr. Colombo, over here. <laughs> well, I have a guest star here in the in the in the uh, in the in the moderator. Just one Antonio. Comment. You know, when you see this uh, eccentric uh, calcium on the LAD, which is a pain in the neck, it's very difficult uh -huh. uh, to handle. Uh, you place a 1.5 balloon in the LAD, yeah. and then uh, with the balloon inflated uh, at low pressure, six seven, you rotablate. Uh, with a 1.5 burr. Ah, you wrote up the balloon also. Yes, and the balloon will not break because it's soft and will create bias of the burr. Oh, you burr. mean not inflated balloon? Inflated, 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 inflated. And will push the burr towards the calcium and bias and cut the calcium. <laughs> so it yeah, make it yeah, even yeah, more directional. Uh, it's a directional uh, intended to be directional. Exactly, it's a directional, rotational attack. All right, I'm going to try another off-label technique soon. Coming up. I, I warn you, don't try it at home. Okay, yeah. <laughs> don't try it at home and uh, don't try it in New York and USA. <laughs> okay, now what do we do here, guys? All right, looks good. What do you want to do now? What does the app say? Forget about what we're going to do. What does the app say? <laughs> Dr. Kinney. Yeah, no, based on the... Yeah, what? based on the app, this will be two stent uh, technique since there's a uh, significant lesion in the diagonal and the length of the lesion was just about uh, 10, 10 millimeters. 
So we have a terrific you result. You cannot have it. And you don't want to follow the app. But the result could be changed. Okay, after then the let's send across. Ah, you don't want to follow yeah. the app. You're inclined to revise the app, maybe. Uh, no, I they're would follow the addendum. app and put two stands. But if you guys want to stand across, we're okay. I mean, I'm if you want to put two stands, you can. You can, also. you can, uh, I don't know, try. The question is if you put one stand because of this eccentric calcium, can you really going to expand it to 375 or something? Or it's going to create a bump in that? And should you just put yeah. a, v, a V stand, not trying to make the distal, uh, the, uh, the distal main vessel uh, match yeah, the, the proximal cutters, main eh? vessel? Leave alone proximal main vessel. Three and five, three and five quarters or four. What do you think? Yeah. It's a four. No, we are planning uh, since that eccentric calcium is there, we want to cut that area with a three, seven. three seven five cutter. Three seven five cutter. All right. Right there, yeah. And then I think we will uh, stand across. I yeah, well, is, I mean, standing across means that you have to match the proxy, the stand to a very large diameter of the proximal vessel. That's what I was uh, considering about. If you compare to that, that little bump may be more than you think. Whereas if you focus on the distal vessel, that's not so bad. Dr. Waxman has a comment. Yeah, I think the app is right. I mean, look how many procedures you have to do and you still may have to put another stand. So you're doing cutting yeah. balloon one, cutting yeah. balloon two, then you're gonna put the stand, then you have to do postulation. You know, isn't that simple to go directly with two stand approach? Yeah, well, when you have an osteal a diagonal of a big diagonal, this this one is maybe more than 2.5. Yes. It is so definitely. I, I think the point. app is right. You can go around it and so, then you may go back to the app, but I, I wouldn't change the app. Don't change the app, let's avoid the disaster. That's what we have to do. No. Okay, then let's follow the app and we selected 4028 for the LED yeah, and a 25. You don't want to inflate 16 a for the bit, side branch. Put a little bit more proximal and inflate but, this thing. Yeah. No, I am. I am. I am doing yeah, that. Okay, Look great, here. Great. This That's is exactly really where that eccentric one. calcium is. That's a really Yeah, we one. are about 16 atmosphere. Look here. Yeah. I think we really need something. Keep, keep it up. Dr. Tierstein's idea sometimes you have to keep the balloon up for 45 seconds. In order to have effect of this uh, of the of the um, of the pressure. So okay, done. Okay, get night. the two stands. Forty-five okay, seconds. Okay, well, a mini crash New technique of uh, non non left main. Can we start playing the mini crash technique of non left main by the side app team? You want to do mini crash? You don't want to do V. Um. You want to do T? You want to try to do T? This is not a V. No, no, no. No, no V. You want to cover the LED fully. Oh, let's see. Also, if, if at all the patient comes back, then uh, recrossing in a V is very hard. Recrossing of the side branch in a V, recrossing of the side branch in a tap technique is very hard. Very difficult, indeed. Very difficult to disaster sometimes. Particularly if you crisscross yeah. in the wrong way, you put a balloon and then you crush the stents even. Uh, yeah, even yeah. Even this the, is uh, this a lot of way, uh, it's a, the, crisscrosses the here. But we continue to make this uh, this case extremely complicated by requiring Dr. Kine <laughs> to keep recrossing into the side branch through lumen. I know. So, you know why the patient has a lot of tortuosity, groin tortuosity. Every wiring, everything is very hard here. Yeah. Four. Okay, give me the stents quickly. Two five. Is it four or? All right, we have 21 minutes okay, to two, five, the end of this transmission. And Dr. Sharma has slowly made his way to the next room for case number eight, I presume. But we continue to stay here to see the double stand technique, exactly as the app planned and suggested. Is the app playing by the side? No, nothing playing. Let's play up the app, please. You got to show the app in the factoid uh, screen or the side screen. Oh, yes, it, we does see it. Yes, that's right. Keep playing that, though. Keep looping it. We see the 3D app. Yep, that's right. The 3D app is shown. Excellent. If, if only it really was like So we are going to the side branch. Okay, Good. let's see. And now main vessel. That's great. 4028 in the main vessel. All right. 
So okay. then what we'll do is we'll deploy the side branch strength. That's a bit generous. Uh, a millimeter of the... 28, yep. Definitely can't miss. I think there's a kink in the guide or any tortuosity difficult for the strand to go, right? Uh, the, the effect of the 4 stand strand, that no matter how you cut it, is a big stand. Yeah. Why don't you go with a 3.5 and, and then you are most dilated anyhow. Shorter? Yeah, 23, maybe. 3.5, 24? Yeah, 3.524, yeah. One other approach is oh, we to can do, do a step crush. The other thing what, no, what we can do is do a oh, step Dr. crush. Oh, Waxman was to further complicate this case. It wasn't complicated enough for him. So he says, forget what we're what doing right it? now. Let's start doing physiologic assessment of both lesions to decide what's happening. What do you think about that? No, no, that's not what I said. I said just you make it even more complicated than what I said. <laughs> of course I am. You, you want to put me in trouble. Of no, I, I, I was just suggesting to okay, do you it the diagonal. Me? If it's good enough, then you save a stand there. V5, 20. Yeah, I know. The, yeah. Everybody no, no, I think we can do stuff for us. down, but the app is going to You are 3, 5. Two yeah. stand yeah. technique. Yeah. You are 3, 5, 15 something you had, yeah. right? Yeah. Two okay. stand technique. So, for instead of mini crush, we are going to show step crush. We are going to put a balloon in the LED, crush it, That's then right. put the stent in the LED, recross. So called step crush. Avoiding crush. the That's multiple right. steps of the DK crush. Yeah. So, um, uh, multiple steps of the DK crush, we are cutting short. Okay, very good. So, the, the technique here is you're maintaining the same stand in the diagonal. And instead of putting a stand in the LED, we're going to put a balloon in the LED. And after uh, deploying the diagonal stand at the ostium, the balloon in the LED is going to, and removing the balloon of the stand, uh, the balloon of the LED will be uh, crushing the um, uh, a few, uh, just the first or second strut of the diagonal stand against the well, wall. Even this and, is not uh, going. And then the, 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 sec the, the LED stand will be subsequently introduced into the vessel at another step of this. Get me a new balloon. I don't know which one more complex here, the new, CTO new part three, or five, the bifurcation three. part. I, I think <laughs> the bifurcation part is more the, complex. Yeah. yeah, you know why? There is the tortuosity, and maybe now there's a kink in the guide. I cannot get any device up. So we're going to go to a non-inflated balloon. CTO was very fast. Well, yeah, why don't you put just a this compliant balloon But there. that's okay. Just put a compliant balloon and inflate that. That's gonna go, that's got to have to go. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the only job of this balloon is to just deform the, or the first or second strut of that stand. There is no other function. So you're not really inflating it to break a plaque or anything. So even a compliant balloon will gonna, is going to do that job um, to deflate okay. the stent. Exactly. So that. now you see that we want a side branch stent coming into the vein some die. All right, great. Let's do a little test. A millimeter, a little bit of the strut in the LED. Everybody yeah. okay? Perfect. Right there and there. Don't move it. Good. Go. Go up with the side. Even stand. We're going advanced. up with the stand. We're going to go with the stand at go, a high go. atmosphere. Good. 14. Yeah. We are 14. So the indentation on the, on the balloon of the stand, which was demonstrated, there was a visual yeah. stenosis there. And now we're going to come a little bit back and go even okay, higher good. to make sure Down. that the ostium is good. And now you are removing the equipment from the. From this is the, a. Uh, this is a not in the. Uh, George, this is not in the app. Okay, done. No, no, this is. So now the new we app. take the wire of the side branch. That's in the new app that <laughs> haven't uh, gotten yet. That's in the app 2022. Okay, right. So now I'm going to take this wire out. Very important. Okay, crush that. Yeah, go up. Why, why, why don't you just do like a. Crush, 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 crush. Crush, go crazy. Good. Exactly. Good. Very high pressure. You really need to put that strut up all the way. Doing small inflations yeah. there is not going to serve the purpose because, um, you okay. know, you, you may not crush it. And if it's sticking out, 
you're not going to be able to pass your stand in the LED, which is going to be a big size, therefore it's going to be a bulky device and all the stories. And of course, Dr. Keen is going to have to recross this, uh, uh, this uh, Not yet. Uh, right now, remember for the DK crash, we have to recross, we have to kiss. We are not doing that step. Instead, yeah. I'll place the stent in the LED, recross, and then kiss. I know, I understand, but I'm saying so that is very, the well, you, very ready. You have recrossed this diagonal, if not five, for sure four times already. So <laughs> it's going to definitely happen uh, even with a, a crush tent in front of it. Let's see. We keep making this case even more complicated, even more complicated uh, with, with every, in every time. And it's a really a great case. Really a great case. Any other techniques? No, so no, now we are going, well, oh, this is yeah. the same 28 or? Yes. Yeah. So or the, the, the only thing as you can say here, let me explain that unless the stand strut is crushed, the stand that we're trying to place now may now, not uh, go because you can it may see it's bump crushed. on that strut. So it's very important. Can you the see strut. the crushed stand? And you can see it very clearly, and therefore the pathway to yes. the LED is uh, is open, and the, and the stand goes in very easily. Some die. And the, the good the, now. Oh, it's very good. Some it was very good. There. The yeah. Advance a little bit, huh? Okay, good. Yeah, it was good, good. at the beginning. I think that's what we want. Uh, to send it up in a natural position. Let's go. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Good? Exactly okay, where you want it. It's exactly okay. 20 millimeters. 24. This is a photo. At least. Now you see it has crushed it. At good. Least. And now we will recross. Okay. Down. All right. Now is a difficult part. So one question, at this point, do you Tricky do a pot, pot or you just pass the wire to the diagonal and the pot after that? Or you do pot I, I would, I mean, the pot, yeah, your pot is essential for uh, why don't left we do wing. A, why don't we do a little pot now? Not. Well, you have the balloon, the wire ready. You want to try it with the wire because the wire is right there, but you can do I'm going pot. to try the wiring first. Yeah. The pot helps you sometimes to rewire because it gives you a true. bigger lumen. Yeah. That's why the advice to do the pot now. It's true. You may want to, you know, if you want a pot, a pot may also be four, five. That, that point is uh, very important. Very big if I have very trouble in wiring, then of course we'll pot. Otherwise, we will. Pot or not to pot? This is the question. <laughs> there you go. It went in already. But it can't follow. Yeah, I know. I mean, this is Balu. This wire has crossed this about four times wire. already. This is the same wire. Can't you can't you get a new wire there at least? <laughs> a, little, a little new wire as opposed to yeah, okay. this banged up six times wire. <laughs> okay, get us a new feeder. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, please get a new it wire. It has a little memory. Even if I say don't go, it is trying to go there. Yeah, see? yeah, right there. It went. It went. Of course, as soon as you ask for a new wire, that's when it's gonna go. That's the trick. You have to say the magic words that is open a new wire. Oh, then it goes. Has okay. anybody noticed that? It happens all the time. But you have to really believe in those words when you say them. Otherwise, it doesn't work. If you fake it, then it's not crossing. And the nice thing is, uh, a new you, you, you cross the uh, side branch that really towards the distal end of it. Uh, instead of up top, which really helps get a balloon across. All right, now uh, let's go. What balloon is this one? It went very, very, very good. Two five. Two or twelve. Two or twelve. Two or two or. Very good. Excellent. Two or twelve. Two or. Yeah. What we'll do is we'll uh, create a little channel. Then we'll go with two five high pressure balloon, yeah. a four o balloon to the LED, kiss, and that's it. Then we are done, my. So the various technique, I think exactly what Ron Waxman mentioned is that if my wiring was difficult. Then, yes, pot, especially the large vessel, there was calcium, the likelihood you can go behind the strand strut, that is why you have to do proximal optimization and then cross. Very important, proximal optimization in uh, left main. Excellent. Um, okay, apparently they're ready in uh, some other room. So what I'm going to do here is a final kiss and then 
Yeah, we'll I be think done we'll here. You guys want to move to the other room? Steps and uh, let's thank Dr. Yes. Kini and Dr. Parashuram, who are doing a great job over there in uh, in this room <laughs> with a CTO reverse crash and all these things after. Let's after show, show you the final picture before you leave. All we have to do is kiss now, but yeah, let's show yeah, you a let's final see one, picture. One injection, we see the distal vessel, how it looks now after all the. Yes, yes. Because it could have been opened. It's going to look better. fantastic. That's how it's going to look. Indeed, yeah, it's fantastic. You see, nice distal LED. I think fantastic. with vasodilators, it'll get better. Fantastic. You want to do yeah, a, a little kiss? bit nitro will help. You want to do a, a high, high pressure kissing balloon, and then uh, the flow is going to get yes, better. Yes, two of it. It's going to look great. Let's go.